Transmitral Doppler tracing from apical four chamber view showing varying degrees of fusion of mitral E and A waves. E by A reversal is also evident in the later three beats due to partial EA fusion. Usual transmitral Doppler shows an early diastolic E wave and an atrial systolic A wave normally separated by a short interval in diastasis where there is no pressure gradient across the mitral wall when the normal vital valve is widely open. Tachycardia shortens the period of diastasis and leads to EA fusion. EA fusion is also seen in mitral stenosis when there is no diastasis due to persistently elevated left atrial pressure causing a continuous transmetal gradient. First degree AV block also enhances the possibility of EA fusion. When the mitral EA fusion is partial, as in the last three beats of the picture, it is still possible to measure peak E and A velocities and demonstrate E by A reversal suggesting left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. But when there is complete E A fusion as in the first two beats of the initial image, it is not possible to calculate the E A ratio to assess diastolic function. Son and colleagues suggested using mitral annular velocity measured by tissue Doppler in such cases to assess left ventricular diastolic function. They showed that there is a good correlation of the ratio between peak fused mitral inflow velocity and peak fused mitral annular velocity with left ventricular diastolic pressure. They mentioned that a ratio of 8 or more predicts left ventricular filling pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury or more with a fair sensitivity of 65% and specificity of 74%. Here are a few important references on mitral EA fusion and assessment of LV diastolic function. Question on echocardiographic assessment of left ventricular diastolic function with special reference on diastolic function assessment in atrial fibrillation. Though there are several parameters for evaluation of left ventricular diastolic function by echocardiography, the most commonly used are the pulse Doppler mitral E by A ratio and tissue Doppler mitral E by E prime ratio. Some of the other useful parameters are mitral E velocity deceleration time, changes in mitral inflow with Valsalva maneuver, mitral L velocity, isovolumic relaxation time, left atrial maximum volume index, pulmonary vein systolic bar diastolic velocity ratio, mitral color M mode VP and E by VP ratio. Tricuspid regurgitation jet velocity and pulmonary regurgitation and diastolic velocity indicating pulmonary hypertension are also taken as surrogates of left atrial pressure in the absence of pulmonary disease. Doppler integration of mitral valve is usually done from the apex through the apical four chamber view. The transducer is placed directly over the apex beat and the echo beam is directed upwards. A good four chamber view of the heart is obtained showing all four chambers and both atrioventricular walls. The Doppler cursor is then aligned along the long axis of the left ventricle passing through the mitral valve. The Doppler sample volume is placed just distal to the mitral valve so that it picks up the flow in the left ventricular inflow. The initial portion of the mitral diastolic flow is called the E wave, early diastolic. And the final portion which occurs during atrial systole is called the A wave. Normally most of the left ventricular filling occurs during early diastole and the E wave is taller than the A wave. When the ventricular relaxation is impaired in diastolic dysfunction, the atrial contribution to ventricular filling progressively increases and the A wave height increases so that there is equalization of the E and A waves. As the severity of diastolic dysfunction increases, A wave becomes taller than E wave. This phase is known as E by A reversal. Still further, the E wave becomes taller due to elevated left atrial pressure, mimicking the restrictive filling pattern. This is a type of pseudo normalization of the mitral flow pattern. The upper half of the image shows the apical four chamber view of the heart. The Doppler cursor and the sample volume are seen along midline of the left ventricle. The lower half of the image shows the Doppler flow pattern across the mitral valve. The x-axis is time 
and y axis represents the velocity in centimeters per second. A triphasic left ventricular filling pattern with an additional mid diastolic wave called T wave by some others and L wave by others can occur in situations of left ventricular diastolic dysfunction especially in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Another video on this channel describes triphasic mitral flow in more detail. The normal ratio between the amplitudes of E and A waves, E by A ratio, is 0.75 to 1.5. The mitral flow Doppler patterns in left ventricular diastolic dysfunction has been divided into four stages. Stage 1. In mild diastolic dysfunction, E by A ratio is reversed and less than 0.75. The reversal is due to the increase in A wave due to the more forceful atrial contraction to overcome left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. The deceleration time of the early diastolic filling or DT is normally less than 220 milliseconds. DT is prolonged in diastolic dysfunction. These patients are generally asymptomatic. In stage 2 diastolic dysfunction, the E wave becomes taller due to elevated left atrial pressure. This is called pseudo-normalization of the filling pattern. In this stage, E by A reversal can still be demonstrated during Valsalva maneuver. In stage 2 diastolic dysfunction, the E wave becomes very high so that E by A ratio is more than 1.5 and the DT is below 150 milliseconds. This is also called restrictive filling pattern. In stage 4, this restrictive filling pattern remains fixed even during Valsalva maneuver. Initial stages 1 to 3 are considered reversible with treatment. Stage 4 is considered as advanced. Use of drugs producing bradycardia like beta blockers in stages 3 and 4 may precipitate low output state. Tissue Doppler image with color kinases in the inset. E by E prime of the medial mitral annulus is shown as 19.1 indicating type 2 left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. In diastolic dysfunction, as the relaxation of the ventricle is impaired, the velocity of medial mitral annulus is reduced so that the E by E prime ratio is increased. E wave is measured prior to tissue Doppler imaging and stored so that the software application displays the E by E prime as soon as the E prime is measured. E by E prime below 8 is considered normal while ratio above 15 is considered a feature of left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. E by E prime has been correlated with left atrial pressure as well which is in fact the left ventricular filling pressure which increases in left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. Estimation of pulmonary capillary wedge pressure from E by E prime on tissue Doppler was covered in another video on this channel. The E velocity at the lateral mitral annulus is different from that at the septal mitral annulus. Septal E prime is slightly lower than lateral E prime. E by E prime at lateral mitral annulus more than 10 and E by E prime at septal mitral annulus more than 15 indicates left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. The yellow tracing is pulsed wave tissue Doppler imaging. The next negative wave after E prime occurs during atrial contraction and is designated AA. The positive wave after AA is the SA wave representing the systolic myocardial wave recorded as the annulus descends towards the apex. E prime velocity is also known as EA, A for annulus, or EM, M for myocardial velocity. It reflects the early myocardial relaxation and occurs during the ascent of the mitral annulus. Measurement of E prime is useful in differentiation of pseudo normalization in the mitral inflow from the normal pattern. There are also limitations for E by E prime in the assessment of LV diastolic dysfunction. One situation is decompensated advanced systolic heart failure with large left ventricle. Broad QRS with abnormal septal motion, significant mitral regurgitation, 
and presence of cardiac resynchronization therapy are all confounding factors. Usually, LV diastolic dysfunction assessment by ECHO relies on mitral inflow velocity measurement with demonstration of E by A reversal as an evidence of diastolic dysfunction. In atrial fibrillation, the absence of atrial contraction and the A wave makes this assessment impossible. Moreover, the variation in the cardiac cycle also causes beat to beat changes in ventricular relaxation. Echo parameters useful in the presence of AF include mitral E wave DT and E by E prime, color MO derived VP, early diastolic flow propagation velocity and E by VP, peak pulmonary vein diastolic flow velocity, pulmonary vein diastolic wave DT, peak acceleration of the mitral E wave, IVRT and ratio of IVRT to the time between onsets of E and E prime waves. Flow propagation velocity VP on color M mode is measured as the slope of the first color aliasing velocity from the mitral annulus in early diastole to 4 cm distally into the left ventricular cavity. A dual Doppler technique has been described for simultaneous measurement of E and E prime so that the ratio E by E prime can be calculated in the same beat itself. This avoids the beat to beat variation in these values which would compound a non-simultaneous measurement. Short of this novel technique, any measurement in AF would need averaging of values for 5 to 10 cardiac cycles. Mitral E wave DT less than 100 milliseconds correlates with a pulmonary wedge pressure of more than 18 millimeters of mercury. Deceleration time is the duration between the peak of the E wave and the upper deceleration slope extrapolated to the baseline. It is usually measured from the epical four chamber view. Pulmonary vein diastolic wave DT is also measured in a similar way from the right upper pulmonary vein in the apical four chamber view. Here are the initial set of journal references. Few more journal references are here.